This is OMS Voices, an Amos podcast. I'm Bill Klaproth, and with me is Dr. Gary Ballou, who is here to discuss TMJ disorder, causes, symptoms, and treatments. Dr. Ballou, thank you for being here. Happy to be here, Bill. Yeah, thank you so much. So let's talk about this. What is TMJ? We hear this uh, a lot, so tell us, what is it? Ironically, it's not a disease or a disorder. It's just the temporomandibular joint or the jaw joint, and everybody has two of them and obviously used to eat, chew, talk, and, and, and live life. So being that it is used more than any other part of the body, it's susceptible to wear and tear and other things. Is that right? Just like a knee or hip. <laughs> right. So then what causes TMJ disorders? That's a very good question. And majority of the time, we really don't understand. We generally consider microtrauma and macrotrauma to be major players. Microtrauma is typically overuse for different reasons, clenching, grinding, excessive functional uh, activities, parafunction, biting fingernails, chewing chewing gum. Hmm. But many instances, we really don't have an understanding. Okay. Is this something that as we all age, since we're using, you know, these muscles so often, it just kind of wear and tear? Is that true too? In many patients, it is. The younger patients tend to be less wear and tear, but there tend to be a lot of psychological factors, anxiety, stress, those sort of things, which overlay increased activity of both the muscles and the jaw joints that seem to predispose many individuals to disorders early in their lives. So what are the symptoms then of TMJ disorders? The classic symptoms are pain with biting, chewing, yawning, fatigue that develops with prolonged chewing, limited opening, popping and clicking in the joint, which may or may not cause pain or limited opening. Mm -hmm. So what about other things like headache or ringing in the ears? Can it cause those types of things too? Absolutely. When you think of headache, there are multiple causes of headache. And one of the designation is temporomandibular joint disorder generated headache which can be hard to distinguish from regular headache and takes a, a thorough history and physical exam. Right. So that's how you diagnose it then. So then how is TMJ disorder treated? It varies. Most of us like to approach things conservatively initially, which means a soft diet, vocal rest, heat, anti-inflammatory medications and muscle relaxants, and sometimes an, an occlusal orthotic splint, if you will, that patients wear between their teeth. After that, if that's not successful or on, or on a different patient candidate. Uh, if needed, we move on to surgical procedures, some of which are minimally invasive and some a little bit more invasive. Do you ever get to the point of joint replacement? We do. It has become more mainstream over the last 20 or 30 years to approach some patients with joint replacement once they have failed more minimally invasive procedures. And the outcomes are excellent for the majority of patients. So you mentioned earlier rest, soft food, things like this can help TMJ disorder. For the general population, can they manage it like that? And will it go away on its own for someone who gives it rests, you know, soft foods, things like that? That's a great question, Bill. And the answer is yes. The majority of patients uh, do quite well with conservative treatment over a period of time. And it tends to be a self-limiting disorder in the majority of individuals. At what point should someone see an OMS? I think when you get to the point where if the pain is severe or the functional limitation is severe, or if you find the symptoms are more mild, but they haven't improved over a month or two, that would be a great time to, to see your oral and maxillofacial surgeon. So then, speaking of that, how can an OMS help with TMJ disorders? Initially, just making the appropriate diagnosis to ensure that it is TMD or a temporomandibular disorder, I think, is important. Then initiating or a conservative approach or at least verifying that the patient's had that previously. And then, of course, selecting appropriate imaging, such as MRI scans and CT to help confirm the diagnosis. And then initiating some treatment, whether that be arthrocentesis or whether it be arthroscopy. Both of those are minimally invasive procedures and certainly should be the first line of attack. And then taking it to the more involved procedures, such as arthroplasty and total joint as mm -hmm. needed. So TMJ, it sounds like it can be anywhere from a minor annoyance to really 
severely um, affecting someone's quality of life. It sounds like if you even think you might have a problem, it's a good idea to see an OMS. Would that be right? Correct. And I, and I think the, the variation in the signs and symptoms and the quality of life issues varies from uh, from very minimally concerning to severe. And, and again, it's, it's patient-driven. And, and at that point, yes, it would be great to get an opinion and, and guidance from an oral maxillofacial surgeon. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is very informative. Thank you for stopping by today. So as we wrap up talking about TMJ disorders, Dr. Ballou, anything you want to add? We're here to help you. We uh, remain the only profession that can really manage temporomandibular joint disorders and uh, have a wide variety of treatment options that can be beneficial. Absolutely. Well, thank you for your time. Appreciate the conversation this morning. Absolutely. That is Dr. Gary Ballou. And for more information in the full podcast library, please visit myoms.org. And if you found this podcast to be interesting, please share it on your social media and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for listening.